Jerry freaking Rice. I could probably make 10 videos in a row on this guy and the content would stay fresh. There's just so much to say about him and the first thing I do want to say about him is this. He was so good for so long that it doesn't even seem like he's human. So here are five stories that pretty much prove this man was just a different species. Originally, Rice didn't even play football until high school. And the legend goes, it is in Mississippi where the self-described high school nerd turned into a football player almost by coincidence. Skipping class one day, Rice was confronted by the principal and ran away. Rice received a whipping for his misbehavior and a referral to the football coach because his speed was so impressive. Now, without playing too many sports and training every day, you may be wondering where in the world all this speed came from. And there's a story on that too. Rice credits his speed to his chasing down a beautiful black stallion named Pete. Rice had to run after the horse in order to ride it each day and did what it took to get that reward. He said it took 45 minutes to an hour to finally catch the horse and that coincidentally conditioned him. It could have been 100 degrees out and you'd see little Jerry going around chasing down horses. Maybe he could have been the best defensive back of all time instead of wide receiver. Either way, this man was on a collision course for the NFL. In 1983, Sports Illustrated called Rice the catch of the year, and included in that story was how he received his college nickname. It said, Rice has been called world by teammates ever since coach Archie Cooley suggested last year that Rice could catch a BB in the dark. The next year at Mississippi Valley State, the team averaged nearly 61 points a game, with Rice setting numerous records. It must have been so clear that this otherworldly receiver could play that when Bill Walsh turned on his TV the night before a game, he saw the Mississippi Valley State highlights where Rice scored two touchdowns, and this prospect must have made quite the impression because sometime after that, Walsh was sitting there trying to figure out a way to move up in the draft to go and get him. That did end up happening because the Cowboys were interested in taking him, so the 49ers traded with the Patriots to move up and get their man. And all we can say now is, what a trade. LMAO at Cowboys and Patriots fans. Jerry Rice has caught more passes than anyone in NFL history. And there's a pretty cool story about how he may have ended up developing these famous hands. Here's how the story goes. His hands and focus were honed working for his father, a brick mason on scorching hot days. Rice would stand on the scaffolding and catch bricks from his brothers to hand to his dad, with any dropped brick being deducted from his paycheck. That's one way to motivate a kid and it certainly seems to have paid off. Maybe there is something to these brick catches, I guess he's not the only one doing them anymore. Antonio Brown has also posted himself doing a brick workout, so that's two of the best receivers ever doing it. Still, Rice did somewhat struggle with drops early in his career, but the effect the drops had on him might be what made him so great. Although this time his paycheck was probably a lot bigger. Ronnie Lott once said after he had a rough game with a couple of drops, I saw him sitting at his locker crying. For a lot of people when they lose, it's not personal. For him, it was always personal. It showed how much he wanted to be great. The book Talent is Overrated by Jeff Colvin really dove into just how far Rice was willing to go in his workouts. It says in team workouts, he was famous for his hustle. While many receivers would trot back to the quarterback after catching a pass, Rice would sprint to the end zone after each reception. He would typically continue practicing long after the rest of the team had gone home. Most remarkable were his six days a week off-season workouts, which he conducted entirely on his own. Mornings were devoted to cardiovascular work, running a hilly five-mile trail, he would reportedly run 1040 meter wind sprints up the steepest part. In the afternoons, he did equally strenuous weight training. 
These workouts became legendary as the most demanding in the league, and other players would sometimes join Rice just to see what it was like. Some of them got sick before the day was over. And also in the book it says he became famous for the precision of his patterns. His weight training gave him tremendous strength, his trail running gave him control so he could change direction suddenly without signaling his move, the uphill wind sprints gave him explosive acceleration, and most of all his endurance training, not something that a speed folk sadly would normally concentrate on, gave him a giant advantage in the fourth quarter. When his opponents were tired and weak, Jerry seemed as fresh as he was in the first minute. Steve Young has also added when people talk about Jerry's work ethic and say, oh it's really extreme, they do it a disservice. There's an iron will to it, it's over his dead body. Jerry to the core was driven. You belittle that drive by saying he had just a great work ethic. Most people have an off switch and they choose when to go all out. Jerry didn't have an off switch. I could probably find dozens more of these quotes, but you get the point. Jerry Rice was one of the hardest working athletes of all time, and you can attribute plenty of his ridiculous success to that right there. In 1987, the runner-up to Rice in touchdown receptions was Eagles receiver Mike Quick with 11. Jerry Rice had 22 in just 12 games. There's so many insane stats and records that you could put to Rice's name. Apparently, he holds so many records that he owns the record for owning the most records. Let me tell you or I guess show you a statistical story. The year is 1991. Jerry Rice is currently 11th all time in receiving yards and I'm just going to shut up and let you watch just how crazy his career yardage looks as time passes. Even as passing yards and receiving yards go up over time, Jerry Rice still remains all alone at the top. And nobody is even close. Larry Fitzgerald, obviously an all-time great himself, has played in a more pass-dominant era and still has less than three-fourths of the yards Rice somehow accumulated throughout his career. That's all I've got for today, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and please remember to like, comment, and sub it up.